Good morning, everyone. My task this morning is to update you on uh, where we are with ACL repair. I want to thank Reinhold and everyone at Arthrex for allowing me to share my data. My name is Greg DeFelice. I'm from the Hospital for Special Surgery in New York City. My first ACL repair I did in 2008, and it's been quite a long and winding road since then. This is one of the earlier papers that we wrote where uh, we suggested that maybe the orthopedic uh, community abandoned the idea of ACL repair a little too soon. It seemed to me that the uh, previous generation of surgeons had the right idea, but simply the wrong execution. Imagine if you would, if we, took, if we stopped innovating with the cell phones after this, this gem. Uh, we'd never end up where we are today with supercomputers in our pockets. Those of you with teenagers actually might enjoy that. My idea was simple, that the ACL tear on the left uh, behaves differently than the ACL tear on the right. And we were all taught that the ACL can't heal because it has poor blood supply. This is an acute proximal ACL tear in a 40-year-old martial artist. And you can see very well that there's excellent blood supply by looking at the capillary refill. This is a proximal type 1 tear, one of my earlier cases in my first 20. And you can see uh, that it was off the wall there. This is the perfect tear to do uh, ACL primary repair with internal brace. And here you can see a year later how the ACLs healed nicely. Most impressively, if you look at the origin of the ligament up by the femoral wall, you can see it's healed uh, very readily to the wall. And if you look closely, you can see the internal brace under the scar tissue there. This patient's about eight years out and has had no issues since. Basically, I'm suggesting that uh, ACL reconstruction, we should, we should have more arrows in our quiver than ACL reconstruction. I want to share with you my research, give you a little idea of where I think the future of ACL surgery is going to be, and we'll go from there. Over the past decade, the, uh, the interest in ACL primary repair has really skyrocketed, as you can see here from the number of publications per year. There's about four techniques out there that are in the mainstream. On the upper left is my suture anchor technique to which I added the internal brace right around when it came out, actually. On the upper right is uh, Gordon Mackay's uh, technique of internally bracing using buttons. This was also studied by uh, Duigi and Wilson. On the lower left is the DIS or ligamus technique. And this one has quite a bit of data on it where they, they bury a large spring into the tibia to introduce some give into the system. And on the lower right is Martha Murray's technique where she places a blood-soaked collagen sponge in between the ends of the ligament to try and help the healing. That's the bare technique. In the past 18 months or so, there's been no less than 10 systematic reviews on ACL primary repair indicating the, uh, the spiking interest across the world. I'll go through one of them. This was a paper that my team put out looking at papers from 2014 to 19. We looked at 13 studies, 1,100 patients, and we specifically looked at selective surgery done for proximal tears, only arthroscopic uh, primary repairs. We split the groups into three uh, groups, non-augmented primary repair, which would just be the suture anchor repair, static augmented repairs, which would be the internally braced repairs, and dynamic augmented repairs, which would be the ligamus data. All of the functional outcomes uh, were over 85, and the failure in reoperation rates varied by type. Our conclusions were that the outcomes were promising, but as with all nascent techniques, we need better data. Here you can see the failure rates with really not much difference between the three techniques. However, there is a big difference when you look at the reoperation and the removal of hardwares, and the ligamus uh, data with the spring had nearly 40% of their patients require removal of hardwares and reoperations. I am encouraged to say that the internal brace numbers, when we wrote that first paper, it was only about 60 patients that had been published upon. And now we're preparing another systematic review only on internally braced patients. And the results are very encouraging uh, with over 400 cases that have been published upon. We'll quickly go to my technique. Suture anchor repair has a lot of benefits. It's simple, intuitive, and it works. It's technically straightforward and minimally invasive. It's really like a rotator cuff repair in the knee. I use biologically vented anchors, uh, one high and one low to restore the whole footprint. Its fixation point is appropriately at the bony origin and if it happens to fail, it's very easily converted to a reconstruction. Techniques been published in arthroscopy techniques. My overall approach to ACL surgery is what I call ACL preservation. 
This has also been published upon. It's a treatment algorithm that's based upon tear location and tissue quality. I base everything I do off of the remnants. We've uh, modified Sherman's classification system for the types one and two are in the proximal 25% uh, of the ligament. If I have excellent remnant, I'm gonna go straight with the primary repair, although I use internal brace for all of these now. If I have an okay remnant, but I can't quite reach the wall, I'll primarily repair the remnant to avoid cyclops and then augment it with the graft. And finally, if there's very poor tissue, I'll just go with the reconstruction. These are some examples of patients that I would repair, augment, and then reconstruct. We looked at 361 uh, ACL patients, of which I was able to repair 44% of them. And what we found was that age over 35 had a four times odds ratio of being predictive of repair. Surgery within a month, three times odds ratio, and also a low BMI. We specifically focus on the type ones and twos tear, one and two tears, as I mentioned. The number ones are uh, within 10% uh, of the length of the ligament to the wall, and the twos are from 10 to 25% with threes being mid-substance. We've also published in the pediatric group. This varies by age with the, with the youngsters at six to 10 having much more bony avulsions. And then once the physes close, it assumes a, the distribution of the adults. This paper looked at the MRI remnant length and showed that if the remnant uh, on the tibial side, the distal remnant was over 75% of the length of the ACL, we were able to repair those patients 94% of the time. My results, we, Looked at the first 11 patients at two and five years. That was kind of the proof of concept papers showing excellent results. This paper came out in 2019 on 56 patients. About half of the patients were with the internal brace and half without. It was a bit underpowered to determine whether the brace made the big difference, but suffice it to say that the patients did very well and there was no significant difference in failure rates. Our most recent paper show it was the first time we were able to divide the uh, outcomes by age group and the results were very telling. We had 113 patients. The largest group was over 35 years of age, 60 of those patients, two failures or 3% failure rate. Between 22 and 35, we had a 4% failure rate, but under 21, we noticed we had a 37% failure rate, and this has led me to adjust my indications in the youngest patients. This paper recently came out, Acute versus Chronic. We looked at uh, 32 patients uh, less than three weeks, 34 patients at 164 days, and we found that there was essentially no differences in outcomes which kind of uh, changes the algorithm such that the most important detail is the tissue uh, tear type and tissue quality and not the uh, time since injury. You can see here on the low right uh, dissecting the ACL off of the PCL, and there were no differences in failure reoperation, complication, or contralaterals. I've done over 375 patients thus far, up to 12-year follow-up, running at around 90% clinical success rate. And I try and focus again on the ones and twos. Return to sport is very, very similar to ACL reconstruction. This paper was published in the knee last year. Tegner activity levels returned to any sport, 85%. Knee strenuous sports, 70%. And the pre-injuries was 60%. And that's the, uh, the teenagers are baked in there. Most importantly here, you can notice that almost 40% of the patients got back to sport within six months. Join awareness, I really like this paper. We published it in March 2020. Not many people are aware of the forgotten joint score, but really it shows and assesses how, how many times people think about their knee. And what you find is that the people who have ACL reconstructions are constantly thinking about their knee, and the people who had primary repairs rarely think about their knee. There's dramatically decreased uh, morbidity. You can see this patient, 24 hours, no blocks no pain, he's about five years out now. This patient, six weeks, looking like this. Three months, she ran a half marathon, scored 70th out of 3,000 people. This patient, four months, back to nationally competitive tumbling. And finally, this one, which is quite amazing. She's four months out from simultaneous bilateral ACL repairs. She took a, a heck of a tumble skiing and tore both of her ACLs at once. The, the big thing we've got now is uh, Arthrex uh, has released this, the uh, primary repair, the Swivel Lock ACL primary repair kit, and this has all of the tools that surgeons will need to help them to perform this uh, surgery seamlessly for your patients. So we suggest that you think outside the box, that we don't just have a one-size-fits-all approach to ACL surgery, and repair may have a position in your toolbox for certain patients. The tear on the left definitely behaves differently than the tear on the right, and it seems intuitive at this point. ACL repair with internal brace using the swivel lock techniques works great. 
I've worked out the details over the past 12 years and I've shared them with many technique videos and uh, quite a bit of data on the AC on the Arthrex website. I believe we should all have a multifaceted approach to ACL surgery. We should have many tools in our toolbox. ACL repair is a low risk, high reward surgery. Essentially, we're picking the low hanging fruit off of the ACL tree. What we want to avoid, however, is the chasm, the chasm of disillusionment. And with any early innovations, you have the uh, innovators, the early adopters, and as people jump on board to try this neat new technique, their indications aren't quite as tight and their technique's not quite as good, and so we see a lot of failures. That's where Arthrex is so great in helping to educate us all, and I think everyone should partake in all of the uh, knowledge on the website. So the goals are to fan the discussion regarding ACL repair surgery. Judging from this ESCA survey we just did, it seems that we're su succeeding. Is ACL repair a reasonable surgery for appropriately selected patients? 70% of the people surveyed agreed that it was. So I believe that the future is going in this direction where within another decade or two, we're gonna have graftless ACL surgery without question, trying to make things better for our patients. If you want to uh, avail yourself of this technique, first you have to change your workflow, look inside the knee before you get going. You can't uh, go with an ACL repair if you've already taken the graft. Do cadaver labs to practice the procedure, practice stitching the ACL prior, prior to removing it for recon, work up to repair, start with the older population, and persist through your learning curve like you did with a rotator cuff repair in the shoulder. Thanks to my research team, and again, thanks to Arthrex for having me.